Amina Ford, Managing Director of the Ballon Glen Arts Foundation. As part of the Ballon Glen Fringe Festival, I'd like to share a glimpse of what we do here at the newly opened Ballon Glen Museum of Art and the Foundation Residency and Education Programme. Hope you enjoy the range of what we do and visit sometime soon. You can keep up to date on what we do on our Facebook and Instagram page. Hi, my name is Roisin O'Sullivan and I'm here for a two-week residency at the Ballon Glen Arts Foundation which was awarded to me as a bursary by the Cork County Council. Um, the opportunity to come here has been amazing for me because uh, my work is inspired by the landscape and the residency has given me time to reflect on my practice and really explore the, I guess, the countryside of uh, Mayo um, because my work is influenced by the landscape, but um, it takes on um, an abstract form through the studio process. Um, so I guess I'm interested in interested in materials, surface, and experimentation. So when I come back into the studio, it's very much an intuitive process of how I react to the surface of my materials. Uh, my name is Gareth Kennedy and I've been here for the last 12 days uh, in the Ballon Glen. As a kind of follow-up to the kind of Thiersalia uh, sculpture trail that happened here back in 1993, I've been kind of working with a, a local community in uh, the Dunquicon Peninsula on a kind of making an experimental material culture to kind of bury uh, in the landscape. Uh, as a kind of time right um, and the idea being uh, to produce this for the now with, re with regards to recent history in the area but also a very kind of deep archaeological history in the area and then uh, to recover this material in 25 years time. Arriving here in Ballon Glen has been really really superb kind of location and context for that to kind of just to get to grips with like three years of material and um, to kind of process that and to critically interrogate that towards publication and exhibition. First, when I came here at first, which I think was in about 2013, I think, um, I just, it was one of the things I noticed as well as the scenery, naturally enough, the, um, all the lovely cows, which I think were so peaceful, and any time you went to, to a hedge to photograph them, they kind of come towards you. So then I went to the mart, and um, I just thought that was absolutely fascinating, between um, 
the different colours and the um, surfaces and the galvanised and the wet and the all that kind of stuff was really nice plus the human element as well. I had the show here then it was mostly the marsh was the main thing as well as the um, and I think a lot of them um, I didn't want the people to be recognisable but I think some people recognised people by their sort of gestures or their demeanour you know so I've been back loads of times since and this particular time I hardly know what to paint because it's so overwhelming probably from being uh, locked up for three months <laughs> it's I'm out uh, on the way to um, the cage of fields and in the Peter Maxwell cottage which has the most stunning views of Dune Brishta which changes by the minute you know it's just fabulous when you know you could wake up at six o'clock and this spectacular view um, where you can see just it's beautiful or else uh, you can't see a thing <laughs> which isn't the case most of the time I have to say so um, it's just I love coming back and uh, love all the people here and the centre is and the schools come sometimes they come up to your studio and they ask questions and around the time of the exhibition of the march we were saying do you know my uncle and um, mentioning his name and uh, so they were actually very interested in um, in the subject as well really I uh, like rollers in the Funny, but you know, I, the usual thing is that now that it's coming to the towards the end of last week, I just want to stay. Yeah. I suppose one thing that I've been thinking about was um, that so much painting that I see, I feel that it's um, it's very rhetorical. It's like, or it's about the language of painting, and it's. And I'm kind of tired of it. I, I, I want the paintings to not be about the language, but the language actually saying something, not just about the grammar. So, exactly, what is it? What does it say? So that's kind of on my mind at the moment. And uh, I'm. Friday, I got a message from Jeff telling me that uh, Ron Gorchoff had died. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a great, pain great painter, but he, uh, 90 years old. He, uh, I worked with him for a little while. Did you? Yeah. And, uh, and he came to my studio. And uh, he was a fascinating man. But, uh, I was reading an article uh, where he gave to an interview with somebody at the, on the Brooklyn Rail, is that the magazine? Yeah, yeah. And he was talking about how, you know, in like in the 70s, in the 60s, 70s, and, and even into the 80s where uh, 
Krishna gave discourse about painting and painting being dead. And he was like, well, you know, it's been around for 40,000 years. <laughs> There's a possibility it might go on for a little while. And, you know, I think I feel the same about it. You know, it's like, uh, I don't understand that kind of sort of yeah. And that's um, but it, and I think he, he's somebody who actually pursued it his whole life. So he's a great example of that point of view. I'm going to do orange turquoise. So that's the, I think that's the Jackson's one down there. Great, but it kind, it kind of will do. You can see they're, they're quite zingy, those colours. Mm -hmm. Sort of just take it along. It's going greeny. When you see it going greeny, you come the other way, so you kind of play with that. Uh, this is one of my favorite grays. This is this is the one. And if you know my work, you'll know that that's what you see all the time. This is the color I use all the time. It's a, such an interesting gray. It looks a bit more green on there because I haven't seen mixed it up so much. But you, see the tur you can see the sort of the turquoisey blue coming in, you know, underneath there. But you know, that's such that those are three three sort of different greys. I'm going to show you. Um, this is going to turn out like a bit more of a violet, um, but it'll help you explain something. So here's my ultramarine blue. You will all recognize that mm. shade of whatever that is. Um, and here's my Venetian red. So it takes a bit of mixing. And this is a beautiful gray. Oh, you know, so it's a violet gray. That is just such, such a beautiful gray. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've used that gray a lot, a lot. It's just such a great gray. It's a violet gray. Mm -hmm. It sits with the green grays, and I use all those. Those are all my friends. This is black and white. This is black and white. You said ultramarine and well, I'm mm -hmm. So you can see what this is like in comparison. Um, It's useful, but it's very cold. It's, it's not that common in the landscape. The landscape's, you know, a very yeah. earthy place. You'd have to then start adding raw sienna into it and all that. But I'm saying if you mix your grace from two colours, mm. there's so much more energy and vibrancy within, you know, within those grey. Thank you. 